Hey guys, what's going on? Pete with Auto Repair Tips. In this video, I'm working on a Chevy Impala. Check it out. All right guys, so I had a customer call me up today. They took the car, tried to start it, and the car would not start at all. So we had it towed in, and the first thing I did was I checked for a signal at the starter. So from the relay to the starter, we're not getting a signal. On a Chevy Impala, this is the relay for your starter. And I'm gonna show you what we did to check it. Went and pulled a schematic. This is the relay. There's four pins. One goes to the starter, one goes directly to a ground, this is your signal wire, and one is a hot wire. All right, the easiest thing to do first is, let's find the pin that goes directly to ground. Set your meter on ohms, hook it to the ground, turn it on. I got it set on 20 ohms. So if you look right there, top left is the ground. So we're eliminating that one right now. That's definitely good ground. We know that pin is good. Next thing I want to do is I want to find the signal wire coming from the computer. On the Chevy Impala, the computer is located under the breather. So I pulled a schematic and found which, which wire was the signal wire that goes from the computer to the relay. It's a purple and white wire. I tapped into it. I'm going to leave my meter on ohms. I'm going to hook one side of the meter to my clip and the other side of the meter we're going to probe until we find which wire is the control wire. So we know that one's the ground. So let's start over here and let's see what happens. Nothing. Nothing. Okay. All right, cool. So we found out that the purple and white wire goes here. That's going to activate the relay. When you're working with a four pin relay like this, remember two wires are 12 volts, one is a ground, and one is a control wire, which controls your circuit. We already eliminated the ground. We eliminated the control wire. It's not broken from here to the computer. Let's find which one is 12 volts now. Using your meter, you're gonna hook one side to the ground. We're gonna put this on 20, and we're gonna check to see if we have any hot feeds. Okay, we know that's the ground, we know that's the control wire, so it leaves us two more to check. Nothing there, and we have 12 volts in this wire. So, so far in the fuse box, we found the ground, we found the control wire, and we found the 12 volt hot, which means that leaves one wire here. This is probably the wire that makes the starter turn over. So here's how I'd check that. Take a test lead, hook it to the positive side, take your other end, hook it to a clip, and touch it. Let's see what happens. So we know the wire going from the fuse panel to the starter is good. The only thing it leaves to check is, remember I was telling you, you're supposed to have two 12 volts. I've got a ground here, I have 12 volts here, I have a good wire going to the starter. This wire here should be 12 volts. Hey Bobby, come here a sec. This is your control wire. When you turn that key on, it should supply 12 volts to this. Turn this key on like you're gonna start it for a second. Let's see what it supplies. All right, go ahead, try to start it. You're getting six volts. That's not enough to activate that relay. So let's try this. Take a test wire, hook it to the positive side. I'm going to touch the control side of that circuit. Let's see what happens. Turn the key in the on position. Cut it off. That's good, thank you. So what we're leaning towards is a bad computer. Testing all the feeds to the relay, we know they're all good except the control wire coming from the computer to the relay. It's only sending six volts. It should be sending 12 volts, which means you got a bad computer. It's not sending the correct signal to the relay. All right guys, we're gonna go ahead and get a computer ordered and get it installed and programmed. See you in a bit. All right guys, we just got the computer in. Got it from the dealer, wasn't a bad price, it's just a little over $300. But before we get it installed, we need to disconnect the battery. You wanna make sure that the battery is disconnected before you install your computer. There we go. 
when you go to remove the computer, it's got red tabs here. Lock tabs, you're gonna pull them out. You're gonna push down on the clip and slowly move this forward. That raises up the harness that takes it apart. The cover's removed from this one here so we could find the wire to run my tests. So I'm, right now I'm gonna leave it like that. When I get the new computer in, we're gonna run another test and it's easier to run it that way. All right, you're gonna move these out of the way. And that exposes the computer. The computer, when you put it in, it just snaps in place. If you look right here, you can see someone's already been here before. That's not factory. Snap the computer in. Let's put our wires back on. All right guys, after getting that computer installed, it's time to get it programmed. About a month or so ago, we bought a tool that programs computers. I didn't want to spend that kind of money on this tool, but after being taken by one of these dealerships, and I'll tell you that story in a little bit, we went ahead and bit the bullet and bought one. Check this tool out. All right guys, here's that tool. It's made by Snap-on, it's called a pass-through assist. And you hook it to the OBD2, you call the people up, and they do it remotely, and they program the computer for you. And here's why we got this tool. So about a few months back, I had a Honda and had, we put a rack and pinion on it and it had to be programmed to the car. So I brought it to the dealer and I told the dealer, I said, it needs one sensor and you need to program the rack to the car. So they go, they call me up about three days later and they said, it's gonna be $4,000. I said, $4,000? And they told me I needed another rack and all this other stuff. I said, no, bullshit. So I went and go pick the car up, brought it to another Honda dealer. The repair should have been somewhere about 700 bucks. This other dealer charged me $900. They programmed it, put the sensor on it, and gave it back. But ever since then, I said, I'm not getting ripped off again anymore. That was bull crap. I went ahead and bit the bullet and bought that tool. And believe it or not, that tool has worked great. I've done Volkswagens, I've done a BMW, we've done Chevys, we've done Fords, and it's like $120 per vehicle. So it's a no-brainer, it's well worth it. If you have a shop, it's something you should definitely get. All right guys, let's go ahead and get the pass-through hooked up. Let me call the people. You gotta make an appointment though. You just can't call and do it. Like if we call now at eight o'clock in the morning, they may call us back sometime about 12, 30, it could be three, four hours before you get an appointment. But it's like I say, the cost of it is well worth it. All right guys, let's get it hooked up and I'll make a phone call. All right guys, let me show you how this works. We called up and got an 11 o'clock appointment. This is hooked to a power supply, 120 volts. This is hooked to your OBD2. You have to hook it up about 30 minutes prior. It does a login, it takes about 15, 20 minutes to log in. Then they want us to put a battery charger on it, keep the battery up while they do it. And it's wireless, so what'll happen is at about 11 o'clock, they just automatically log into it and they'll call us up and ask us to turn the cycle the key a couple of times and we'll start the procedure. Guys, that's the best money I ever spent. I will not be visiting any more dealerships and getting ripped off for them programming. All right guys, as soon as they're done, we'll finish running the rest of our tests, make sure it starts up, and this job is done. All right guys, if you get an Impala that doesn't want to start, and you're not getting any juice to the starter, start with that relay, do it like I showed you, and you'll get through it just fine. All right, guys, that's it for this video. I appreciate you watching. Catch you later.